So for 2021, the top performing sector or sector should be the same ones that have benefited in the last six months of 2020. It's those that have the beneficial, um, they're the beneficiaries of this excess liquidity that is fueling this synchronized global recovery. So it would be the more cyclical oriented sectors like the financials, the materials, the industrials, the energy, the consumer discretionary, those areas that benefit from increased economic activity. Out of the global indices in 2021, we think the emerging markets are gonna to continue to outperform like they did in the second half of 2020, because again, it is fueled by this excess liquidity and it's excess liquidity, not just in the US. We love to believe it's just about us in, in the US at times. This is liquidity providing by every major central bank around the world. So that fuels global growth. So investors wanna go into those areas that have higher growth, higher risk, when there is this kind of money flowing. In 2021, I think the best market cap group is gonna be what's worked in the second half again. It's those areas with higher risk, higher risk, higher reward. And why would you take higher risk? Because we have so much money coming into the, that has come into the system. The, between the fiscal stimulus, the monetary stimulus, and the interest expense stimulus, people don't count that, but the interest expense from taking advantage of low rates, issuing corporate debt, that there's th really these three forms of stimulus are creating growth. When you have such high levels of growth, you want to go with a small cap over the mid cap over the large cap. While we stopped issuing targets for the S&P 500, we want to look at the conditions that are present to create upside for the S&P 500 or the market as a whole. We st we're going to have a significant earnings recovery, even with COVID-19 affecting growth in the first half. The amount of monetary, fiscal, and interest expense stimulus that is coming into the market is going to allow for strong economic growth in the second half and into 2022. And that that significant upside to earnings should offset any valuation stall that comes with expectations for a little bit higher inflation. So we think it's going to be a pretty good year by pretty good plus or minus 10%. Hey, Grayson Rose here with Stock Charts. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, consider giving it a like down below. Maybe leave us a comment. And if you're new to the channel, you can subscribe at the link up above. We're going to bring you daily content from an incredible collection of technical analysts and financial experts.